My name is McKenna Munda. I'm 15 years old. I'm in grade 10 and I'm an aspiring artist. In the artistic world, I love everything, not just fine arts. I do poetry and I read a lot of Shakespeare and stuff like that. This is a piece from Julius Caesar by um, Shakespeare. Oh, pardon me, thou bleeding piece of earth, that I meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruins of the noblest man that ever lived in the tides of time. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. The type of art I prefer is some ab abstract, some realistic. I tend to go back and forth experimenting with different things, oil paintings, acrylics, watercolor. McKenna, who is the first one in her family, has an all-around interest in the creative world that stretches far beyond painting. I do a lot of writing, um, poems and poetry, um, and a lot of singing and listening to music. Writing is another form of art. I consider it completely art, Choi word choices, um, and how to put things together to inspire people. Writing is a complete art form. My favorite subjects in school are art, obviously, and I try to take as many art classes as possible um, as electives. My inspiration is drawn from so many different things, um, from other artists in art galleries to online inspiration. My favorite artist, a local artist's name is um, Eric Moravi. His nickname is Sticky and he's in so many art exhibitions and yeah, I really draw inspiration from him. called Eric Muraidi, uh, people call me Sticky. I'm an artist, been an artist for the last three years. I do graffiti, I do paint murals, I paint on canvas, and I also paint on shoes. And I also design t-shirts. I'm a dancer too, so uh, art is my life. For me, I'd say I discovered the gift at an early age because I've been, I've been drawing ever since, so. It was just um, it was just a matter of when do I just get into into it full time? Because even in school, I I do waste a lot of time. That is what the teacher said in painting and just tearing papers off my books so that I could make drawings. Uh, after that, after after college, I worked kidogo. Then decided it was time to just quit and just go follow my passion. Yeah, I do work with other artists. That is why I'm in a studio where it's like a communal studio and we are under one person, but we are many artists. So I prefer working with many artists than rather being myself. Uh, for me, art, art is just inborn. My main goal is just to paint the world and I speak to people through paintings. I feel like uh, 
I, I, I bring out those emotional problems that people have. I, I put color to the world where it is just plain black and white. I also like just just like take people to illusion to to an illusion of place where everything is just you know as they wish you know flying horses and all that. Our job is mainly you have to be inspired to paint. Sometimes you lack inspiration. That can really, really take a toll on you. But all in all, you still fight because you believe that uh, since it's our God-given talent and we love expressing ourselves, you just have to stick to it and be good at it. I have oil paints, um, and usually I'll put some oil right there to help water them down. And sometimes I use acrylics, and acrylics um, just need some water. And I use the same paintbrushes for all of them, and the same canvases, but when I use paper, I'll use different types of paper for different kinds of paint. I sharpen my skill by watching a lot of other artists do their work, going to a lot of art galleries and seeing how other people draw and like copying and then turning it into my own style. Right now I'm working on another African lady. I'm going to put more cloth up here. I actually need to go buy cloth very soon because I'm running out. Definitely my family inspires me to work on my pieces. They've always pushed and pushed for me. None of them are really in the art world, but they do try to push me, they'll buy for me paints. Um, my parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, they'll always support me in my art. The, the part about beading, right? And the part that it's the effect it created at the back. Mm -hmm. So not even the initial mm -hmm. effect of the beads, but yeah. the crisscrossing and the very interesting uh, uh, effect but that people don't see. Mm -hmm. But then now you brought that out to the, to the front, which mm -hmm. is very creative. Yeah. What about that one? How uh, is that? I don't know, it's like I did something under it and I really didn't like it, but it was too like 3D-ish, so I had to do something really thick on top of it. My parents definitely nurture my talent. They are constantly buying me new art supplies, asking me, hey, have you exhibited, or do you want to go to an art exhibition soon? They definitely push me really hard to be my best. It's really been support from my wife, it's been support from her grandparents, uh, uncles and aunts who have bought her art, who have bought supplies, who have encouraged her, who she's been able to do art for as gifts. But I think it is so important, particularly at this time in Kenya, because art is almost seen as a second class, not as important, second tier uh, sort of talent. Yet the art scene in Kenya and the number of burgeoning artists who are really doing incredible work is so amazing that they need to be highlighted and they need to be nurtured. Like one of the pieces I did for someone was a tree that had like buttons as the leaves and the leaves falling down kind of to represent like a family tree. Another one is for my uncle who was just recently married. I did two lovebirds sitting on a, a wire. I try to sell every opportunity that I get and so I realized that um, to sell commercially you don't just sell canvas pieces so I translated my art onto bags onto like canvas bags and I sold those um, and yeah those did really well because people can actually carry that and use it and it's not just in their house. Yeah, there's so many art exhibitions. My favorite ones happen at Doucet once a month at the end of the month where yeah young artists come together and display their art. As a working artist it's not enough to produce your art you need to promote it as well. My best sale happened recently. Um, a few months ago in school we were doing an exhibition and like half of the proceeds went to a charity. 
and uh, an American family that also goes to this school decided to buy my piece and I was talking to the guy that bought it and I recently learned that he bought it for his wife for her 30th wedding anniversary and now it's hanging in their living room and that really inspires me that one of my pieces could touch someone so much. We're really proud of what she's been able to do at such a young age and without putting in much effort. But since then she's put in a huge amount of effort into just growing as an artist, uh, understanding different mediums, going to art exhibitions uh, and putting herself out there as an artist. So I'm trying to get more and more realistic in my paintings and I want to go into like hyper-realism and see how realistic I can get them to be. But then like sometimes it's really nice when they're just abstract and a bit more like you can see the paintbrush strokes. The most difficult thing is starting, getting all the pencil lines in and getting um, the pencil marks realistic. The painting is the easiest and the most fun part. But yeah, getting those pencil marks in, getting it to look realistic before I start painting is probably the longest part of the whole painting. McKenna reveals to us one of her biggest obstacles when painting a face. The most challenging portion of the face is the ears. I always leave it for last because I'm always just like, they're the part that has to look the most real and the most like depth filled. So usually I just, I leave that for the last part, but the easiest part for me is the eyes. I always start with the eyes. I have won competitions. In fourth grade, um, there was a Toyota Draw Your Dream Car Art competition. It was a nationwide competition, and she merged amongst one of the winners, and she was showcased in the newspaper. Uh, Toyota invited her and some of the other winners to, to go and showcase their art. I tried my best. I didn't really think I would win, but I ended up winning and going to the Toyota headquarters to receive a prize. I have a lot of family that's into art, but not my siblings. But I have cousins that are really into art, and so like as much as possible when we go over to their house I try to show them new techniques and like they're really into it. I think they really want to follow after me. All of my outfits have paint. There's not one of my outfits that don't have paint on them. I always forget. I constantly forget to wear aprons. So this is a Birds of Paradise. It's my parents' favorite flower. I did it with acrylic paints and I did it in Mombasa um, because new environments really inspire me to do new types of art. Makena draws inspiration from all types of things, experiences and people. Okay, so this piece I was really inspired by motion and um, I also wanted to be really have depth and have like a 3D type of effect. So I added this cloth um, that I got from actually one of my skirts that I cut up. Um, and I used oil paints for this one. Oils and acrylics are really different because acrylics mix with water, but oil paints mix with like oil. Um, and so you need a specific type of paper to do the different types of paints. I'm still learning how to draw faces and drawing faces from the front is still really challenging. So I'm going slowly by slowly to complete the face. So this piece is a bee. I made it out of thread and a needle. I got my inspiration from, um, usually I use beads to do pieces, but I ran out of beads. And so I realized that I can just use the thread in different colors to make my art pieces. Um, I had to use pretty thick paper to get this done so it wouldn't rip. Um, and put paint on different pieces of thread and get thread that already has different colors. It does take a lot of focus to do these kind of pieces and resilience and willingness to continue and finish it. So 
So in my school we have a lot of art classes, so I have a lot of time to finish these type of pieces. And honestly, I create time. You have to be able to create time for things that you love.